All right, everyone, it's time for a little bit of a video response to two individual users who have been having a sort of a semi-friendly disagreement over the aspects of a paganism, Christianity, Western civilization. Uh, those are the Golden One and Varg, of course, Tulian perspective, uh, who have been bantering back and forth on the role of Christianity in Western civilization. I'm taking up a slightly middle road here, uh, not to uh, sell out or anything like that, but because it's uh, my view and it has been for some time. I fundamentally agree with Varg uh, first and foremost. Christianity is indeed, physically speaking, culturally speaking, not a European religion. It was made over in a European image post uh, Constantine. That is, that Christianity was adopted as the state religion of Rome, which destroyed Christianity in the process. It was no longer practiced the same way it was originally. Uh, the original Christians were basically anarchists that lived on the fringes of society, uh, were almost communal after a nature in some respects. Uh, Rome turned it into a political movement, uh, added an element of conquest, chose to interpret the doctrine according to Roman value systems, uh, which transformed it away from what it had been. It Europeanized it after a fashion uh, in the sort of South European sense of Roman legalism rolling it over essentially uh, into the emperor cult, uh, if you can believe that, because of course now you have the state power involved. The emperor is the, the dispensation of the Christian body, essentially, uh, with Constantine reigning over the proceedings and, and weighing in along with these others uh, that he chose to appoint for that purpose. However, Christianity predominantly, uh, in its original sense, is an offshoot of Judaism. Uh, a Middle Eastern religion, which itself is an offshoot of a, a fusion between Babylonian uh, doctrinal legalism uh, and sort of the proto-Judaistic uh, ball worship of the time. That is, Judaism when it starts. We have to go back to the roots uh, in order to talk about this issue. We can't just talk about Christendom. Judaism, in its very early years before the captivity in Babylon, which actually did happen, <clears throat> as opposed to maybe the captivity in Egypt, it's a little bit more up in the air. It appears that they fled there as refugees and uh, made up a sort of a labor population for some time uh, and weren't actually enslaved by the Pharaoh. Uh, that never actually happened. It was sort of a, a tip of the hat to uh, their, own mytho their own cultural mythology. They never had a dogma. Uh, they had oral tales uh, and, and some loose scriptures, and then in Babylon, they learned from them the very concept of having an actual dogma, written sort of mythology. They then adapted that, adopted certain Babylonian tales, uh, Judaized them after it made them part of their own culture. And in that sense, there's a second layer of Middle Eastern thought from Babylon that really is in Christianity because the same process by which Christendom was taken up into Romanism, uh, culturally speaking, and adapted to that purpose, Judaism already had been during the days of the Jews in Babylon, when they were uh, residing there, largely under Babylonian rule as, as sort of a, a semi-sovereign vassal and, and variably in slavery. Uh, that's when that dogma actually came to be. So you have that layer of paganism influencing it from the Middle East, a second layer from Southern Europe. Later on, you get a more Europeanized Christendom uh, in the form of uh, the Protestant religion. Uh, but Romanism, after the Catholic sense, is pure, it's pure Rome. It comes from antiquity, from people who had been pagans. Now then, I also agree with the Golden One after a fashion here, too. Christendom in its modern form is helpful to the West in some ways, not always. Uh, we have, for instance, the Pope, uh, obviously not a lover of Western civilization, who is little more than a corporate head reigning over a for-profit body uh, that doesn't care who joins it or what culture they're from. It doesn't care what the culture is like so long as they're being paid. That's what the Vatican really represents today, uh, to the point where some more fervent Catholics consider Francis to be more of an anti-pope or a heretic, a blasphemer, as opposed to a legitimate pope, uh, because they have these beliefs. I'm not entirely inclined to disagree with them on that token, looking at more traditional Catholic dogma, the legalism there, uh, only by saying the pope is God's representative and thus more or less infallible, 
on a philosophical basis, can you make the excuse for his differentiation from all previous popes? Uh, if you're going by tradition, certainly, he would be an anti-pope. He would be a heretical figure. That being said, Christendom, in some cases, is very helpful. It can lend itself to pure Americana, uh, on this side of the pond, of course, uh, within the European sense. It can mingle with European culture in a more traditional sense. We're talking the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, things like that. It can be ethnocentric in nature. But fire and brimstone Christendom here uh, has started many a proxy war, or at least excused it, uh, has convinced people to take part in like the prosperity gospel teachings, mega churches, corporate entities, uh, snake oil salesmen, and every other vice under the sun. That is unhelpful. Catholicism has fallen prey to social justice warriordom uh, at this point, and you have a pope who pays lip service to socialism um, for, for the purposes of propaganda, really, to get younger people into the church in order to pay the Catholic Church money to give it more manpower. That's really what it's about. We see the same, by the way, uh, within Wahhabi Islam. The Saudis uh, are less interested in the religious dogma itself and more interested in interpreting it in such a way that they can profit off of it. That's what the House of Saud does. That's what the Vatican does. That's what people like Netanyahu and Israel do with Judaism. They interpret it in a political fashion. In a sense, the fire and brimstone Christians, when they say uh, that, that the end times are upon us because of the denigration of Christendom uh, in its authentic form, they are technically correct. Now, I don't believe in Christendom. I don't believe there will be an end times that Revelation speaks about events that were already passed when it was written and so forth. That being said, though, the, the central essence of their argument is technically correct. But paganism built Western civilization before Christianity existed, while Judaism was still an afterthought and still largely just a tribal form of worship in the Middle East. Pagans did that. Pagans were already sophisticated in the days of Athens, in the days of pre-Christian Rome, when Judaism was, was distant from the rest of the empire, when Judea had not been added as a province, and thereafter uh, a rebelling uh, semi-autonomous province under the rule of the patriarchy there. I, I don't use that in the feminist sense, I use that in the, the more literal, the orthodox sense, uh, under the rule of, of some of the people there uh, that are spoken of uh, to some degree even within the Bible itself, which is a compilation, by the way, of scriptures spanning several thousand years of actual oral history, many of which were not written down to begin with. They were remembered over time by lineages of people uh, who were scrawling in the sand and talking to one another and relating these tales. It's similar to Islam, in which you have the reinterpretation of the original Quranic doctrine, essentially, by people who knew or were familiar with Muhammad and then memorized material and had to get together to determine whether each jot and tittle uh, were actually true and then had disagreements over it. That is, in all of these cases, you have, you have the, the re-Middle Easternization, by the way, of that same Judeo-Christian doctrine when Muhammad adopts it within Islam and forsakes paganism there. That, that's the same thing. You have uh, a proto-tribal religion gets paganized in Babylon. It then gets Romanized during the days of the empire there. It then gets re-uptaken in fusion with Sabaeanism and other tribal cults in the Middle East and gets returned into a Middle Eastern religion yet again. Now it's spreading back into Europe. Europe, by the way, right now, in a cultural sense, is Europeanizing Islam. Um, this has set up huge conflict because Westerners, people from Western Europe, the Americas, interpret Islamic doctrine in, mu in a much different way than people who belong still to a more tribal path where they consider violence a regular everyday occurrence. Uh, and I should probably speak more on that topic. So to the Golden One and Varg, what I would say, I'm not a Christian, I'm a pagan. I don't support Christendom in a general sense. I do not believe in Jesus Christ. I do not believe in the Christian God. I don't believe in the very concept of sin and salvation. I left that all behind many years ago. However, Christianity is variable in its form. That is, it, when Varg says, well, Christianity X, Y, and Z, 
there are different forms of Christendom, some closer to paganism, some further, some more or less Europeanized or Americanized over time. You have to look at it in a cultural sense as well. Cultures have a tendency to reabsorb new religions that they come into contact with. This is the case within uh, Roman uh, essence too. The Romans, even in the pagan days, when they marched into some new land, would bring back the deities that they found, the, the spells, the occultism, the mysticism that they encountered, bring it back to Rome. They set up those same gods in their own pantheon. They worshipped them. They had cults and practices associated with them. Uh, this isn't just a Christian thing that's happened. And today, Christianity takes multiple forms in multiple regions. The type of Christianity that you're going to be found, that's going to be found in the Bible Belt here in the United States, has little in common with the way that some Italian Catholic practices their religious faith. Um, and vice versa. The, the way in which an English Protestant may practice is different from someone who's Amish and believes in Jesus in that way. Just like the manner in which Islam is practiced differs from place to place. There's very little relation between an Iranian practicing Shia Islam and a hardline Wahhabi in the Arabian Peninsula or, or a Sufi or, or something like that. There are all of these different groups or Yazidi, someone who still clings to more pagan Christianized trappings. Uh, you would look at the Ethiopian or, or the Coptic movement or something like that within Christendom. You have a totally different story as well. You even have different dogmas. You have within Islam, different hadiths are accepted or rejected more or less. Some groups don't accept any. Some accept them all literally. Some interpret them differently according to their cultural customs. Within Christendom, you have the same thing. I would say that certain types of Christianity are perfectly appropriate for the Western world and have shown themselves to be. The proof is in the pudding. Others, not so much. The prosperity gospel of the, the you know, sort of modern era here in the United States is unhelpful to people. It shills people out of their money. It's a political movement. It lends itself to warmongering. It degenerates people's actual morality because it makes them think, oh, I'll just blame Satan when something goes wrong. And if I do things that are wrong, I don't really have to work on this. I can use use God and say, just, oh, oh, please save me. Okay, well, I'm saved. You know, I don't have to worry about that. And, and I would say that to the Christians as well, that if you give somebody an automatic cop-out for any bad behavior, there will be those attracted to that religious group because of that purpose. We see, for instance, all the, the perverts within the Catholic Church. They were drawn to that because of the vow of celibacy. That is, they felt that the power of this deity could, could prevent them from feeling these perverted urges that they have. They got in there, realized that they were actually in proximity to their potential vice more than ever, and it, it just doesn't work out. And I think oftentimes greedy individuals are most drawn towards uh, hardline religion. Uh, you see people like Ted Haggart, Peter Popoff, whatever it happens to be, people who are very dishonest, uh, shill the masses, take a lot of money. Uh, Ted Haggard, of course, uh, famous anti-homosexual preacher of yesteryear, sort of the satanic panic period, uh, gets found uh, you know, smoking meth and having sex with male escorts. And those are the, sort of the things he was projecting the whole time. Those are the things that he was speaking out most loudly against, against drug use and homosexuality. It turns out he's a drug using homosexual. He was drawn into that and then began to project. I think oftentimes religious leaders do this. Whatever they're speaking out most virulently against is what they're actually into. They fall into that sort of philosophical trap. So I don't have a problem with Christendom. I, in the past, I was more acerbic towards Christians. I don't have a problem with Christian dogma at its core. I think there are violent, evil things in the Bible. Uh, anyone not willing to admit that fact hasn't read the Bible or is just glossing it over and saying, oh yeah, but that was a metaphor or something. I see that as cherry-picking. It's dishonest. Those same people often say cherry-picking Christians aren't even real Christians. Uh, so what are you saying about yourself? Another thing I would say is that Christians need to stop trying to lay claim uh, to building Western civilization when all of the trappings, rudiments, and foundations of Western civilization predate Christianity. And we see this same uh, claim being made within Islam. I've seen multiple posts 
by people who claim, oh, Islam, you know, Muslims invented, you know, they invented the toothbrush, they invented carpets, they invented cranial surgery and stuff. And really what that is is an attempt to appropriate, yes, to use the leftist term, appropriate inventions and innovations that were made by non-Muslims in areas that became majority Muslim later. Sometimes these date to far antiquity. The thing is, uh, these people, uh, the, the more you know, hardline Islamists, often claim that people were Muslims who weren't by misconstruing their own dogma. They claim Jesus Christ, of course, was a Muslim, famously, now, which he clearly wasn't because Islam did not exist in that time period. Assuming that Jesus existed at all, jury, I think, in my opinion, is still out. You have to go to Tacitus before you find any mention that Josephus writing was a forgery from the medieval era. So maybe he didn't even exist. Maybe it's just sort of an oral tradition that got wrapped up into Apollonius or something like that. But I don't see Christianity as an enemy necessarily of paganism in a situational sense. Because there are Christians, like there are Muslims that essentially uh, are only marginally Islamic and still largely practice paganism anyway. Uh, there are Christians that do the same. There are Jews, essentially, that do the same. Mystic Judaism uh, predates dogmatic Judaism anyway, and those spells and practices go back to a tribal cult uh, that dates back to before they even had the concept of an Elohim. They, they were still talking about Elohim's wife at the time. Uh, and I have more respect for those mystic traditions, I think, than I would for the more modern, oh, pre-modern styles of those religions. Then you get into as a parting word here, the postmodern trappings of religions that are strictly political, they are solely, they're, they're remade over and over again, they're reinterpreted in order to appease a postmodern audience. We see this within Catholicism today with the Pope. The Pope has decided to ignore several thousand years of legalistic precedent in favor of, of absorbing more manpower and money, essentially. The things that he says are not biblical, the things that he says are not part of Catholic tradition. He is an anti-pope by the token of Catholicism. However, there are people that accept that, especially younger individuals, which is the exact reason why he's spouting that dogma. Many of these people don't really, in a general sense, even believe in that God. As far as Western civilization in the sense of the Enlightenment and thereafter, when we're talking about the Americas, Christians will also take credit for the founding fathers of the United States which were almost to a man, a bunch of deists who were considered heretics, who hated organized religion, were openly hostile to the very idea of a church, and were so much so that they deliberately inserted into their eventual constitutional doctrine the concept that religion and state should be more or less separate, that the state wouldn't establish some singular religion uh, like they had had over in Europe that they had to deal with where some European states would, would prosecute or persecute people uh, who didn't believe as the state thought uh, fit to believe in. Essentially, the Americas, in that sense, were founded on a refutation of Roman doctrine. Literally speaking, the Romans had done the opposite. They uptook Christianity for political reasons as a state religion. Over here, the, the opposite was done. It was openly refuted. I would also like to point out an interesting thing here, which is that in the Middle Ages, uh, in the medieval times, uh, into the early Renaissance, a lot of people say, well, the church is all that kept Europe going at the time. Uh, they, the, you know, the, the monks were the only literate ones, and they sort of drove what little innovation existed. Secular authority broke down, so the church had to pull the dead weight and provide sort of a hope to people that were mercilessly ground down. That's partially true, but the reason why that happened is because secular authority was largely refuted by the church. Any secular authority that didn't go by their word was in turn persecuted, and so they had their various vassals. Uh, as long as they were getting their money, they never spoke out against feudalism to any significant degree. They never spoke out against the silliness and superstition of the times of the Black Death. They never spoke out against all the regional wars that erupted unless they had some other enemy that they were busy with uh, in the Islamic world, usually. They did very little. Other groups that they ended up persecuting were the ones that were saving Europe over and over, time and time again. We get Vlad the Impaler. He gets some support from the Pope and keeps the Ottomans at bay. 
they abandon him at the earliest possible opportunity for political reasons. And so the greatest fighter against the emergence of Islam uh, into southeastern Europe uh, is hobbled and, and actually <laughs> enchained in the dungeon of the Hungarians for some time. Uh, we have Martel who has to uh, promise all sorts of kickbacks to the church in order to get uh, the manpower that would become his uh, relatively well-trained military force. We get time and time again other individuals who essentially forsake and, and run the risk of being declared a heretic in Catholic doctrine are the ones that save Europe over and over again uh, throughout these time periods. Charles the Hammer, um, Vlad the Impaler, and so forth. You know, think about them what you may as far as being butcherous. Uh, they did their job and they did it quite effectively. And I think some of the worst tales about Vlad, by the way, aren't even exactly true. I, I, I don't think that he routinely impaled people in his own kingdom for small infractions at quite the same level that some people uh, think. And of course, the merchants that he ended up slaughtering were trying to dethrone him. So uh, you can't really blame uh, Velaki and Prince for doing so. Uh, so there's a little bit about the subject. So I'd say w with Varg, I do agree Christianity is largely unhelpful. However, we can't judge every single denomination of Christians uh, throughout the entire world with the same brush. We have to differentiate between their overarching philosophies. Uh, we also have to look and say, are there redeeming facets to this religious force? I say there are, situationally, according to the different denominations. There are some that are largely uh, a plague on the world. Southern baptism is a plague on the world. Um, Catholicism, as it is being pushed and peddled by the current anti-pope, is a, is a plague on the world. Then there are movements, though. Um, pure Americana, European sort of ethnic denominations that do a good job. They fit in well with the culture. They've also become widely accepted and attempting to insert paganism into the argument, say, well, no, this isn't authentic. We, we shall resist them. Won't work. Uh, because there is currently a common enemy of Western civilization to worry about, and people are not going to be inclined, I think, at the point, um, to really fight between one group of Europeans and another. They're too busy thinking about some foreign threat, which is exactly what was the problem in the Middle Ages when these different denominations or forces, some church authority versus some secular authority, or some group of pagans and some group of Christians that were too busy fighting amongst themselves uh, didn't look out for the enemy and got crushed uh, temporarily as the result. I would say, though, it is very much true that pagans built Western civilization. It was already there. These empires came and went under paganism long before Christianity ever existed in the world. They had fairly sophisticated means of perpetuating themselves. Rome was far more advanced, we now know, than we thought it was you know, 50 years ago with an archaeology. They had the trappings of primitive industry. That is, they were beginning to build a fully industrialized society to the best of their abilities. Uh, before that, we, we have the steam engine after a fashion. Now, we have semi-modern medicine. When Muslims say, well, uh, some Egyptian Muslim invented cranial surgery, uh, trepanning, which is what they're referring to, was being conducted thousands of years before Islam existed by people using nothing more than copper tools uh, in the Egyptian empire under paganism. Uh, and that's Egypt. We're not talking about uh, people from Scandinavia, uh, as Varg would say, the, the true Europeans. I would say this, though. The Mediterranean groups and so forth, yeah, they're European uh, after that cultural sense. I have a much more expansive view of what it means to be European or white or Caucasian, I think, than Varg does. Um, it's j just sort of my understanding of genetics and culture. I think that there are things uh, that are of importance within Europe to preserve, but f perhaps it would be helpful to fully define what you mean by European. Uh, I, I would think that it's fairly self-evident there shouldn't really need to be uh, that much of a debate on the issue. Uh, it's genetically, culturally, linguistically, uh, speaking, self-evident which groups are part of European diaspora. Uh, it's not just genetics. I think that's the other problem. Sometimes people, I'm not talking about Varg or the Golden One here, I mean in general. Uh, some people boil race or, or th things like that down just to culture or just to genetics instead of mixing both of them and saying there's importance to both. 
Uh, I think that's a mistake, honestly, when people make it. Uh, they, they also uh, conflate nationality with ethnicity, oftentimes. Now, so they would say that somebody who is of pure Germanic blood, living in Mexico, who happens to speak Spanish because their parents moved there as immigrants a couple generations ago, uh, is somehow less white uh, than somebody who is, who is, you know, half Nigerian, uh, but lives in Europe, was born in Europe, and, and speaks a European language or something like that. I think that that's a mistake that's made. Not that I give great importance to the topic uh, in general, but it should be something that people speak of. If you're going to remark upon these things as though they're important, uh, you have to get uh, things straight before you can do so adequately. So I'd say, yeah, uh, Christianity can be helpful or unhelpful. Islam can be the same, by the way. Some Europeanized sect within Islam, yeah, it, it can be, strictly speaking, part of European culture if it is accepted in the culture that it's present in. Uh, that does not mean, though, that the overall dogma carried by 99.9% .9 of Muslims that would fit in well with that culture. And if assimilation is occurring, it's a refutation of the original dogma. It's almost not even worth continuing to call it uh, the original name for the religion, uh, Christendom after the modern sense and the fire and brimstone path, the prosperity gospel, isn't really Christianity. It's simply not. Uh, Islam is practiced by someone who is a self-proclaimed gay social justice warrior Muslim who believes in women's rights is not technically speaking even Islam. It's a refutation of some of the central uh, precedents set within the Islamic doctrine itself. That has to be, I think, uh, kept in mind. So there's a little bit of a video response on the topic there. Uh, just some interesting uh, things that I had to say about it. I felt it was appropriate to weigh in. That's about all. Peace out.